Yes. Distinguished participants, welcome back again. Throughout the day, we have what very fruitful presentations, very productive, contributing, and good examples. And we have really taken down a lot of notes for ourselves. And now we will be the most productive side. We will negotiate with the related stakeholders. We will negotiate the Turkish environment in deposit system. Our session will be moderated by Professor Dr. Erdem Gurgen from Istanbul Technical University. At the same time, he is the coordinator of today's feasibility report. Mustafa Urgan will be speaking on behalf of glass recyclers and uh, also we do have uh, Edat Bey on behalf of Tidam, Hidyanam, on behalf of GPD and I mean Food Retailers Association and Estran will be taking the floor on behalf of Mekai and on behalf of Sudan, Mekta Panam will be with us. Thank you very much, Ayn First of all, I would like to congratulate Chutem for this important and valuable organization. Since the beginning of the morning, we have listened six different sessions and we have listened very valuable uh, information. And I have made use of myself a lot of things, a lot of details. And I'm sure that it was very beneficial for everyone because it is going to be broadcasted from uh, two champs website, if I'm not mistaken. For this reason, I would like to congratulate and thank you. I'm sure that this session will be very lively. We do have five very distinguished stakeholder representatives, and each of them are representing more than one institution association. We don't have five stakeholders. We have got five speakers, but they are representing 15 or 20 stakeholders at the same time. So from their own perception, we will see how do they perceive the deposit system. I am from Istanbul Technical University at the Department of Environmental Engineering, working as an academician. And uh, I'm also working 3M Technocant, Technocity. And also we do have in the IO environmental uh, friendly solutions. And I am so much devoted my career on deposit system, establishing deposit system of Turkey. So it is my field of expertise. Without extending myself, the information about myself, I'd like to pass to our panel speakers. I have thought uh, and actually flow of session in my mind. I would like to share it with you. You are representative representing many institutions. Please briefly introduce us your institutions so that our participants, our listeners will know whom and which organization you are representing. Later, within nine or 10 minutes, for each of the speakers, we will have the speaking time and please express your approach in the field of deposit system, what is your point of view? As a stakeholder's point of view, what is a deposit system? What it is not? Is it something beneficial for Turkey? Or is it a luxury? Is it an oversized uh, t-shirt for Turkey? Or if, is it possible to make it a tailor-made practice for our country? What are the threats and what are the opportunities? So in general, what are your perceptions about deposit system? In the first turn, we will take these. In the second turn, in order to make the IS system successful in Turkey, what are your recommendations? What are your expectations from ministry or from the other stakeholders or from the institutions that you are representing? Those two topics are not very easily divided from each other sharply, but we, if we can just uh, divide our answers as much as we can, we can reach to a certain conclusion. Hope that in the end we will have additional time, so it will be possible to carry on a Q&A session. Now it is 36 past 14 and the first floor 
will be given to arch female speakers. Since Tuchan is a female organization, Hilian, I would like to pass the floor to you as representative of Food Retailers Association, but you have got other hats. Hello, everyone. As you have mentioned, I'm also a Tuchan woman. I would like to thank Ayneranem for providing me this opportunity. Um, I have joined them two years ago and we are doing very good things. And Ayneranem, I would like to congratulate you. This is the second summit about deposit return system and it is shaping the future of our country when we speak about deposit return system. And this summit, I'm sure that will bring a lot of benefits for all of the stakeholders. Once more, I would like to congratulate her. And uh, hello, everyone, distinguished participants and distinguished representatives of Ministry of Environment and distinguished professor. I am working at Migros as the Director of Quality and Environmental Management. In 25 years, I have been working in the retailing business. When we speak about the Food Retailers Association, it is the institution, the body that I am representing for today. And also, I am at the Executive Board of the Food Security Association. In the last 10 years, we have carried on some common projects with Ministry of Environment. I mean, uh, assigning a fee for the uh, plastic package, bags, and uh, many other things, uh, many other activities have been carried out by our committee, working committee, and in the ongoing process, we will be totally involved, we will organize workshops, and we are ready to serve to work with anyone who are interested in this field. Very briefly, what is GPD? Let me explain it to you. Food Retailers Association was founded in 2012 and representing the modern retailing business of Turkey, food chains and also supermarket chains and this Approximately 40,000 selling point is being represented by our association and 201 billion is the turnover rate and 435,000 of an employment force is working under our umbrella in 81 cities, 18 million households and 68 million population is directly being served by our association members. And the major point of deposit is touching the consumer. And at that point, retailing is, an, of course, a mandatory and obligatory a pillar. And we are carrying on very important responsibilities. And uh, in parallel with the ongoing developments of the global scale, climate change and sustainability are in the main core of our business, just like the other associations. And here, what we aim to do is in, in accordance in also coordination with our ministry, we would like to create sustainable, successful cooperation and establish a system, design a system with this collaborative action. Now I would like to leave the floor back to you. I think it was the firstly introductory part, how we are going to proceed. You can continue, Viliana, to answer my question. You have just used one minute of your 10 minutes Okay, I continue then. As an association, we are always interested in these fields. We are ready to work with. And of course, Green Deal is uh, focusing on circular economy. Yeah, waste reduction is one of those aims. And accordingly, along with other countries, deposit system is going to be launched in Turkey. And I think that's a important, beautiful step. And our goal is along with our producers and producers associations work together and to make sure that we have a sustainable and effective deposit system to benefit the environment. We want to have a transparent, monitorable, and non-profit self-financing sustainable business model and with this model we're going to have both beverage producers and retail uh 
representatives. We have to have these parties together. Of course, we have the Environment Agency, that is the most that is among the most important stakeholders in this structure. So the, we are really the keystone of the system because we are the ones touching the consumers directly. So our primary suggestion is as follows. In order for the system to run really well, we should not take care of square meters. We need to have a system that will encompass all trades not exclude kiosks or other small stores. So when we establish a collection system, retailers should not be burdened with collection activities. Manual and RVMs, uh, RVM systems should be uh, chosen, but retailers should be a part of the decision. So if it limited to square meters of traders, we don't think that's going to be the right way to go because there might be regional differences and sales conditions might be different. The RVM that you place in one place could remain unused. So the most important thing is to make sure that the retailers have the choice in this very regard. Aside from that, in public spaces, RVMs could be positioned. We believe that this should be the case. We should have collection points in public spaces because when we consider the retail structure in Turkey and compare that to the structures in developed countries, they are not similar. Take, for example, the Germany model. And I'd like to actually share with you some data. For example, in Germany, 97% of the retail is organized trade, whereas in Turkey, organized retail is around 43%. In terms of store numbers, in Germany, organized retailer stores around 35,000 and tradition stores 24,000. Average square meters in stores? 986. So we're talking about 1,000 square meters per store, whereas in Turkey, this structure is completely different. So we have, uh, these are based on Nissan data, we have around 227,000 sales points and 191,000 of them are traditional ones, below 50 square meters, or around 50 square meters. We're talking about small grocery stores and kiosks. These are small uh, grocery stores and only 35,000 are a part of the organized retail system. Therefore, when we think of the sale points in Turkey, we have uh, an average square meter of 300 36 square meters in grocery stores. So on one hand, you have heavily organized retail, and then on the other side, you have a largely unorganized retail system. So in that regard, we believe that it's very important to note that when we are going to establish the collection system, I think this is really a vital point to consider. And uh, when we check out the Turkish DRS report, we see that we have around 2,000 stores that are between 500 and 1,000 square meters. So RVMs do 87% of the collection in Germany, and you have they have 20% manual, and they have around more than 100,000 RVMs in Germany, but in Turkey, we have 2,000 large supermarkets. Yes, we can put the RVMs there, but you won't be able to do so because that's not going to be possible. And so when we come up with a design for the collection system, the Turkish 
environment agency along with retailers should work together to have collection centers. So I believe that that should be a part of the whole thing. Otherwise, the rates would be just the opposite. So we would see a completely different picture. System costs would be uh, higher if we rely heavily on manual collection. So I just want to point out the collection system. In the second round, I can talk about some of the important findings from our side for um, the system. I can share that. And lastly, when we decide the method of the collection system, we need to have retailers on board when we are uh, making that decision. I'd like to emphasize it yet again, because if we only take into consideration square meters for our RVMs, if we just have an RVM choice out there, then this could challenge the system. And also, we would see a situation in which it wouldn't be fair to uh, stores with large square meters because most of the investment co would come from them. So I believe that these items should be considered. We need to re view the entire retail system in Turkey and then um, come up with a plan accordingly. Thank you so much, Hülya. Of course, uh, retailers are a vital element uh, in in the whole system because the consumers will bring the empty containers, they're going to take back the money and go away. But actually the real operation begins after that. It's a really complicated process that begins right after that. And retailers position is indisputably important. So thank you for, for that and for your suggestions. In the second round, you're going to carry on with your recommendations. Yes, of course, we will. So, Esra Iran, our next distinguished guest, another important stakeholder. She is a, a representative of Beverage Association of Turkey. And so they're a part of the put to market or producer, as we define it, um, association stakeholders. So Esra, could you briefly introduce yourself and the organization that you work with, then could you share with us your views on the DRS system? Is it convenient for Turkey? Is it good for the environment? In my view, I take um, environment at center stage because when you consider the waste in the environment and plastic waste in the sea, we have to get rid of them. And I believe that the DRS is a very important tool to make that possible. So from your perspective, how do you view DRS? Thank you, Mr. Professor. Esteemed guests, the representatives of ministries and NGOs, esteemed uh, Adam Professor, and also Tucham. We would like to also thank Ainuş, who is the head of Tucham and who helped organize this event. Yes, I'm the chairman of the board of directors of Beverage Association of Turkey. I'm also responsible for corporate relations at PepsiCo, and I'm also the chair of sustainability at PepsiCo. And I am a part of several NGOs. I have memberships and also board uh, chair roles are a part of that. I'm a, I'm a lawyer by profession, but I'm also a retailer. So Beverage Association of Turkey has been offering uh, beverages for more than 25 years. And we also contribute to the environmental benefit of Turkey. And we combine, we bring together the beverage producers across Turkey. And environmental solutions are areas in which that we contribute to the solutions of. And we also work on developing environment policies in order to make sure, for example, to have um, reduced use of water and energy. Deposit return system is something that we follow very closely. 
chiefly uh, Minister of Environment and Urbanism uh, representatives and also our Dam Gurgan uh, were people that we met with last year. And today we have key stakeholders of uh, the uh, retail system in this event. So what's our perspective uh, as beverage producers on the DRS? So when we think of the best in class implementations across Europe, when established rightly, DRS plays a huge role in transitioning into circular economy. Circular economy is something that I would like to highlight actually. As beverage producers, for a very long time, as part of EPR, we are carrying out our obligations. Of course, if there is going to be a more effective system for the country, then uh, we have to do our work. We did, and what we did was to analyze in detail the several DRS uh, examples across the globe. In countries where there is an effective DRS, then bottle to bottle recycling becomes possible and producers can access recycled raw materials quite easily and the costs thereof are also reduced. This is a very important benefit both for uh, the producer and the consumer and also the state benefits as well. It contributes a lot to the circular economy in that regard. And in terms of recycled raw material needs being met, for beverages, beverage containers, there are certain legislations, uh, and we believe that legislation should comply with EU legislation. That would be an important step towards circular economy. In Turkey, we have chemical raw material recycling, but for mechanical raw material recycling, we need to do the necessary work and that would be very beneficial. So chiefly the beverage industry, we would like to have all stakeholders in the system. We should work together and base our system on some of the best class experiences around the world, we believe that we can find a convenient solution for Turkey and set it up in Turkey. We are ready to contribute to the upcoming work wherever necessary, and I'd like to point that out especially. So I'd like to talk about the recommendations in the second round. Um, I would like to spend most of my time in the second round, if that's fine. Thank you, Esra. And as I listened to you and to Julia, I was very happy because both stakeholders, both of you are among the main stakeholders of the DRS and you're both supporting the system from the bottom of your heart. And this is something that we welcome very gladly. And we're not like countries in Europe um, with 3 million or 5 million populations. Just one country is equivalent to the population of just Kadıköy, a district in, in Turkey. Um, so if you did not support this system, uh, it wouldn't be possible for the system to, to be successful. So seeing that you're supporting us, it's very, very happy as a consequence. You emphasize the importance of recycling. Uh, we have two recycling stakeholders uh, among us, but because we are prioritizing women speakers, we're going to have another female speaker right now, Mehta Fura. She is representing the Association of Packaged Water Producers and again, a stakeholder of a put to market company. 500 milliliter. Uh, PET bottles are the most used ones in the in the industry and glass bottles are very often used as well. That's why water producers are very, very important stakeholders. So without further ado, please welcome Mehtap Ral Tunjab. Could you please first um, introduce yourself? You have 10 minutes and we'd like to hear your views. Thank you so much, Aydam. First of all, I would like to point out Tucham, Tucham's women. Uh, there are so many different perspectives 
and there are so many best-in-class practices that are shared in this event. I would like to thank uh, you deeply, both personally and on behalf of the association that I represent. And there were also professors, stakeholders, and ministry representatives that contributed. Thank you so much for being here for such a nice cause. My name is Mehtap. I am a licensing manager at Danone. And for the last 15 years, approximately, I have been involved in legal works in various MNCs, and I worked with several ministries, including the Ministry of Environment and Ur Urbanism. We've had common projects, and um, I worked with them on several regulations developments. I'm representing Sudaj, Association of Packaged Water Producers, and all across Turkey we have operations, and we work with suppliers and producers of packaged water. So we combine these stakeholders as an NGO. It was founded in 1993, 1994. Well, there were problems with the hydration and dam problems. We had difficulties in accessing clean water. And at the time, we wanted to guide uh, the requirements and necessities of water producers at the time. So first of all, it was named um, in 1998, packaging water producers, and then mineral water uh, recycling producers association was produced. And of course, as an association, in terms of the development of packaged water uh, producers and in terms of protecting the underground and above ground water resources, we have so many aims and we have so many different activities in that regard. But at the same time, there are uh, also, of course, activities and operations by water producers. We want them to our pay due regard to the environment and also take measures to protect the environment. And also, at the same time, we have strategies um, that also that also follow the guidelines by the ministry in terms of protecting the environment. And in that regard, the deposit return system, if established across Turkey, and if it meets the targets as an effective system, we are, of course, going to be there to support uh, the ministry. And we'd like to also take part in the process. We, uh, as an industry, know that PET, an important uh, element in the, in the industry, we use PET very, very often, and how to move forward in this regard is something that we can totally contribute to. And companies, the industry, have worked towards and also are working towards making sure they use recycled material. So we want to have clean raw materials, and we can do so by using recycled material. DRS will support that immensely. It is very, very important for us in that regard. Ve, e, ne denir? Döngüsel ekonomide aslında kullanılması. Diğeri de e, geri as, e, doldurulmuş e, ambalaj dediğimiz tekrar doldurulabilir ve bizim sektörümüzün çok büyük bir kısmını oluşturan damacana sisteminin de e, bu depozito iade sisteminde ayrı bir şekilde değerlendirilmesi gerektiğini genel olarak düşünüyoruz. 
E, Erdem Bey şey demiş, hani bu sistem kurulabilir mi Türkiye'de? Açıkçası biz kurulabileceğine inanıyoruz. Ama önemli olan e, gerçekten e, Türkiye'ye özgü ticaret ve ekonomi koşulları göz önünde bulundurarak, coğrafi koşullar göz önünde bulundurularak aslında tüm paydaşlar yani hem üreticiler, piyasaya sürenler hem satış noktaları olmak üzere adil şekilde yükümlülüklerin altında e, olacağı bir e, sistemin kurulmasının önemli olduğunu düşünüyoruz. E, en baştan bu şekilde kurgulanmasının önemli olduğunu düşünüyoruz. Bu anlamda aslında birçok sektör e, dernekleriyle de birlikte çalışıp sektörel ortak görüş oluşturmak. So we have to work with uh, other uh, stakeholders. So we have to make sure uh, that these are used. And we work with Esra and Hülya, so the associations of GPD and MEDA. We believe that it is important to develop a system that fulfills the needs uh, of Turkey. And I hope that these will be discussed in the second session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mehta. You also support the system. Well, all three uh, speakers not only support the system and they also want to be part of this in a proactive manner. So this is very important. Thank you. Uh, well, your stakeholders do play a very important role in the sector. So the things that you have said must become uh, part of the sector to make it sustainable. It all boils down to recycling. Our purpose is to make sure uh, that packaging that people have are recycled. These are not end up, these are not going to end up at landfills or in seas. There are two important recycling uh, sector representatives. Vedat uh, Kılıç, he is the president of TÜDA. And at TOB, he is a board member of waste management. Let us first of all give the floor to Vedat Kılıç. From the perspective of uh, being a recyclist, what do you think about this? How, what kind of an impact could this have? What kind of an impact could this have on Turkey? The floor is yours, uh, Vedat Kılıç. And then I will give the floor to Mustafa Urgen and then finish the first round. I would like to first of all thank Tuchem for this organization, starting off with Aynur Acar. Well, let me briefly uh, introduce myself. My name is Vedat Kılıç. I have been the president of Tudam for the past 12 years. And also, uh, I am also the vice president of the Waste and Recycling uh, Business Council at TOP. There are uh, 12 facilities in uh, Bulgaria and Turkey. I am uh, the chair of uh, this company. So it's important to say that uh, TUDAM is an association with having obtained the licenses. First of all, we would like to um, convert raw material into value. And secondly, we try to make sure that the recycling sector uh, becomes important. Uh, we have been discussing it um, for many years and the legislation is being completed. Let me, under three headings, summarize what it means for us. Well, packaging waste and what does a deposit mean? Uh, with uh, the control regulations 
for packaging waste that entered into force 2004, the main purpose is to introduce certain standards to producers, but also to make sure uh, that uh, the packaging waste is collected in a healthy manner, but due to some structural problems and uh, lack of, of sustainable financial means, I have to say that we have not made much progress. Unfortunately, packaging waste uh, is not collected in a healthy manner. They are collected, unfortunately, with organic waste. So they go to, they end up in a landfill and they are also collected uh, by scavengers. So I have to say that this does not become the um, human decency. So in order to make sure uh, that waste is collected with maximum benefit, the deposit system will prove to be very, very beneficial, will contribute significantly. We see uh, that uh, the collection uh, amount uh, reaches 90%, and uh, we believe that in Turkey it could be much higher. In terms of recycling industry, what does it mean? The recycling industry as you know, um, waste has become very important as we have started to adopt circular economy. It's a very important resource. Waste should be recycled to become raw material and raw material, recycled raw materials should be used by sectors again. There are very important commitments made by important players. A clean resource as Estra Iran mentioned, uh, it's very important. We all know that. We have seen that there is significant investment in the recycling industry in the last decade in Turkey. Yet, there is still a difficulty in finding, in having access to the financial means. We're trying to meet the needs through the import. So the deposit system, if applied, we need clean um, resources. Another important uh, thing, a third subheading, well, from the perspective of ordinary citizen Vedat, citizens do pay a very important role. The DRS system is beyond how it is done. Uh, citizens should become stakeholders, should be part of this process in Turkey. In circular economy, you buy, consume and recycle. This system, so in other words, the circular economy is also very important from the perspective of citizens. I can no longer hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can now hear you. No, I did not say anything. I was just listening to you. Okay. So from the perspective of citizens, it's very important that citizens are made part of this. As you know, in shopping bags, uh, the practice has given a start. As you know, previously, as it was for free, we used to use um, shopping bags more than we needed. It was a very convenient practice. And the use is almost 80% less in comparison to the previous years. So if uh, there is the right fee, um, determined for this, then citizens will become part of the solution. It will raise a very important environmental awareness. So I try to sum up my 
uh, remarks under three headings in the first round. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vedat. Yes, uh, we have uh, listened to you from the perspective of a recyclist uh, and a citizen. You are part of the actual process. You know the problems very well as you are part of uh, the practice implementation. So your valuable contribution is uh, very important at this point. You finished three minutes earlier and also Mehtap and Estra, they also finished three minutes earlier. So we can uh, use those extra three minutes in the second round. Now I would like to give the floor to our to the representative of the young generation, Mustafa Urgan. He has a long career in the glass industry. He's one of the very few people specialized in this field in Turkey. We know uh, that he has been involved in many discussions on glass from an environmental point of view, there is a serious problem uh, with respect to the collection of glass. Aluminum and uh, PET bottles could be uh, collected, but we have serious problems with the collection of glass. The value is low. Unfortunately, we cannot um, involve a very important raw material into the circular economy. We spend huge amounts of money to bring sand from um, the desert and to make uh, glass. Well, I started to steal time from your presentation because when I hear about the word glass, I get excited, but I stop here. You have 10 minutes. If you could just briefly introduce yourself before you start. Well, thank you very much for your nice words. I also would like to thank, I would like to thank Ainur Ajar specifically because you act as a catalyst to bring us together on such nice platforms. Thank you very much. Let me start with Egechev. Uh, Egechev celebrates its 50th anniversary this year and I am the second generation in family business. I'm working as a manager. And I'm also trying to give support to the management of TUDAM, as Vedat Kluch mentioned. Well, glass recycling, collection of glass is not much uh, advanced in Turkey. I have uh, been also part of the board of the Glass Association in Europe for the past six years. I also would like to uh, share with you some figures of Fervar. Fervar has got 40 members. It represents as a federation, a total of 2,040 members. It has a turnover, annual turnover of 5.7 billion US dollars. This is obtained um, with 8.3 million tons. On average, glass recycling is around 76% in Europe. Now, if you ask me how it is collected, uh, there is collection at source. There are systems that involve DRS, but starting from today, by collecting at source, the collection activities uh, continue and the figure is as high as 70% in some countries, whereas in some other countries, well, the EU has a target of 85% uh, for 2025. So we have different uh, practices. In Romania, it's 64%. Uh, in Portugal, it's around 50% in 2023, 20, uh, 2022, 2023, they will have the DRS system. So in 2023, 2024, the UK will also adopt the DRS system. 
So, well, the purpose is to reach 85%. Where does Turkey stand? Taking into account 2020, it's 6%. In 2021, we will complete around 3%. Well, uh, collection at source uh, has been uh, suspended at the municipal level. The uh, focus is on zero waste. So we don't receive much from the zero waste. It's on a voluntary basis, although the costs are very high now, we will preserve this system for a while so that people still uh, preserve that habit of uh, recycling glass. So why is the uh, DRS important for Turkey? Well, we always talk about best practices. We have to also look at the bad practices. The worst practice in Europe, which country is it with DRS? With 51%, it's uh, Croatia, 51%. In comparison to Turkey, it's a very good uh, uh, figure. This is not an exemplary one. Finland, uh, Denmark, Germany. Well, in Germany, they have the RVM machines. Uh, they have different materials. Well, as 85% is sufficient for them, they did not feel the need to become part of DRS system. Well, comparing Turkey against EU, in terms of glass production, Turkey is like one sixth. Turkey is one of the leading countries in terms of glass production. Uh, 40 billion uh, glass bottles are produced. Uh, these are the figures of 2020. With new investments that are increasing capacities, because with the increases in the packed products, and uh, as uh, Turkey grows in exports, uh, this means that packaging figures increase. 1.8 million tons of glass packaging could be produced. That's the capacity. I'm not including uh, 400,000. Uh, tons of glassware. This will reach 2 million 50 tons at the beginning of 2020. In Europe, uh, it's 40 billion. And this um, means that uh, 1.4, 1.3 million tons of glass for recycling. In terms of DRS, then, aluminum, uh, pet and glass, aluminum cannot be, well, it has never been on our agenda that aluminum cannot be recycled. It has become clear that we have to make a new studies. In pet, the prices are around 5,000 TL. The price are going up. This also shows us that the calculation methods change. In terms of units, in terms of weight, uh, the number of units is 4 billion, and pet 4 billion units and 6.5 billion glass, but 85% is glass bottles. So, well, it constitutes 85% as economic value. 28% of economic gain will come from glass weight. This is important value. So this is a very short summary. Where are we in Turkey? Actually, in the glass, the producers are designing their furnace, they would like to have minimum level of the break, broken uh, glass. And uh, when we consider 5%, 6%, and the first breakage amount was 10%, so the furnaces 
uh, needs to have minimum level of actually, uh, but they are not able to provide it. When we look at the recycler sites, in order to not to lock down our factories, we are focusing on exporting activities. 1.5 million tons of glass are being transported to uh, wild storaging areas are being brought being thrown away to the forest as Ayurveda mentions and in order to provide the raw material we are importing uh, the products the raw materials to our country to produce glass and actually factories are focusing on the natural sources and they are very little in amount when we speak about uh, export act uh, import activities the imported amount is actually 60,000 or 70,000 tons, which is very low. The needed amount, the needed real material, as you can see, are coming from Sina deserts or uh, by consuming the natural resources they provide us. When they do this, uh, they consume 25% more energy. When they use the broken glass, uh, they are, of course, melting uh, 900 or 1000 degrees. And it's, uh, when you use the broken material itself, it's reaching up to 1500, which is closing an additional carbon emission. And when I conclude my speech, Actually, Viviana emphasized the point in the Green Deal issue. The Green Deal issue in the near future, most probably facing with industrial side vehemently. And when we speak about the Green Deal, if we are focusing on the SDGs and if we do not provide the European standards as the producers, and if we do not reach to the level of uh, essential uh, renewable sources and renewable energy production because of the limit values, we will be out of the game. And especially in the packaging industry and export activities or the package product export rates, we need to follow these uh, guidelines very closely and the conditions very closely. And approximately 50 or 60 percent of the export activities are going towards Europe. So in order to open the gate of the uh, actual industrial site, we need to collect more data and we need to collect more sources, recycling sources. And very rapidly, it is essential to take some further steps in two years, three years to reach and cope with the European ranking levels. And of course, deposit return system may serve that and may contribute that. Thank you very much, Mustafa Bey. You are on top. Time. We were a little bit beyond your time, but I could not interrupt you. You have told the story very efficiently and emphasized the importance of actually glass. And it is essential to include uh, glass inside the deposit system. Once more, it's a very important, very valuable material from your statements we have comprehensively understood. We have completed our first turn and listened very good determinations related with the topic and really hope you have been arguments have been proposed and Levant Bay. We could not progress a lot, maybe, maybe you are right, but when we consider 2010s, uh, we have taken a long way and many uh, incentives have taken place on the legislative side, on the practical side, but recently, when we consider zero waste project and when we speak about the uh, fee for the uh, shopping bags, for example, and also to this declaration, which is being included inside the rules and regulations and uh, establishing such kind of an establishment, which is the Turkish Environmental Agency, is a really very fast step. Turkish Environment Agency is a very important milestone to be mentioned. And I'm sure what we have experienced in the past would be lessons for us because there are very serious lessons to be taken in our memories. We can keep them alive and uh, we can have prospective and projecting type of practices hopefully very soon. And for the future projections, uh, the topics which you have mentioned will gain a great importance. All of these speeches are being recorded and the related authorities must probably will be taking them into consideration in detail in the near future, the following days. What we are going to present as the ERS system will be taken into account of the points we have pointed out. Of course, it is essential to take it more seriously. We do have five stakeholders. They have spoken for 10 minutes and deposit has got many stakeholders actually. 
multi-stakeholders. We have this Finnish example. Uh, Helpa executor presented us some uh, round circular shapes, diagrams, and there are 20, 30 stakeholders inside the system, and all of them are important of their own. And when we join our forces and come together, we can resolve this problem. We should be decisive, and we should look at the horizon, hopefully. And for the first turn, I'd like to take in each and all of you. And for the second turn, I would like to follow the same order. First of all, let's start with Juliana and Juliana. What are your recommendations? You have already started to present them, but we can get in details of your recommendations as from the perspective of a retailer in the retailing business, as a supporter of Tugi system, as a supporter of the RS system. What would you like to propose? What would you like to recommend additional for the first two? Now, you have pointed out, uh, I have pointed out the fact of collection points. And just like the other systems, the uh, first Turkish environment agency is giving the amount, which is essential. I mean, the operational costs, like the electrical costs and employees' costs, there is a certain level of cost. And so there should be a service fee to be paid. And uh, the figure can be calculated according to the approach of the uh, retailer, can be uh, based on an RDM system or a manual system. And what is the critical point here is as follows, the consumers returning process and what will be the deposit fee which will be uh, paid back. Uh, we prefer it not to be in cash form. Uh, the fee should not be in cash form. It can be a bill, it can be a loyalty card. And uh, in that loyalty card, you can upload points, for example. And uh, from the delivery point, it will be possible to spend it maybe in the shop, in the retailing point, you can spend it. Do you uh, propose the same thing for the manual process? Yes, exactly. We can give a bill, a receipt, and that receipt should be spent in that shop. Uh, and because when you speak about cash, the financial part will be more difficult to cope with, will be very challenging. And we all, as you know, we do have private label products. And private label products are placed in the markets and we do have producer hats. All of the products and also the company registration fee and the deposit fees should be valid for the private label brand owners. In another way of saying, if the product is a private label product, it should not have an impact on the identity of the producer and the producer should handle the responsibility of this product and also the packaging value should be uh, placed on the label and the label size should be same for all any type of package in order to not to confuse any system and on the deposit fees and there shouldn't be any additional taxation any value added tax and the products which are recorded in the deposit return system should have a spatial marking system in order to differentiate it from the other uh, products, there should be a barcode, there should be a logo on it. When we receive these products, we should, uh, of course, uh, trace them. We should read it with uh, the help of a maybe decoder, a machine. And so it is essential to have a standard labeling system, barcode system. And when we look at the products in the system, their deposit value should be continuing with the present conditions. I mean, the retailing entity and uh, the producer do have some procurement agreements and the duration of the payment should be kept in the same way. So the deposit should not be uh, actually built with a separate bill and they should be uh, included in the same bill with the other products non-deposited products and the collection points are very critical and there are some of course uh, small scaled 
entities which do not want to take back these deposits and there should be some penalties against such kind of behaviors otherwise as i have tried to mention you we do have a fragmented structure retailing structure 20 billion pieces items are being sold only 16 percent is being represented as the deposit return system products we should disseminate it i mean all of these re recycling process returning process should be disseminated to whole areas for not having a specific focal point and these are my general proposals basically as i have just tried to mention it should be transparent it should be sustainable and it should be, of course, um, give ground to the executors. There should be a multi-execution model and all practices should go simultaneously all around the world, all around the country. And at the first stage, the REM posts, uh, of course, should take the support of Turkish Environment Agency because Turkish Environment Agency will be transpassing a certain amount of financial support uh, to the RVM owners in the collection system, all of the equipments which will be used in their supply and reinvestment, financial support needs to be given. And this is what we demand. And of course, collection, as I have mentioned, should consider the structure of our country there may be some pilot projects to be implemented in collaboration with our ministry in collaboration with the related stakeholders we may install we may integrate some pilot equipments we may have some observations on those pilot sites these are essential to be made i totally agree with mr the last issue is a very major issue especially at the collection points and when we do not have any uh, actually machines there should be a system we should develop a system to collect manually uh, this is a fragile product and uh, bringing them to the counting center to the uh, actually let me consider that every single item is a value actually the backside the storaging areas are very small in size storing them and also passing them transporting them to the licensed company are very critical processes so it is essential to create a pilot project for glass products we should follow closely and we should progress in accordance with the conditions in reality this was what we have proposed. Uh, we have started, uh, we have proposed to start with PET and metal, and we can take glass in the second stage, we said. But of course, in the regulation, we do have the glass for this issue related issue. We should not uh, bring a bottleneck situation for the retailers. We should establish, we should design a suitable system which will serve to the needs of everyone, every stakeholder. This is what I'm going to say in short. If there are any further questions or any further turn, I may take the floor and continue to speak. Thank you very much, Yana. You have got very structuralist, very productive contributions, constructive contributions. It's Estranum, sir, if I'm not mistaken. What are your proposals, Estranum, uh, from your own perspective as Medar or from, you look from a citizen's window, what do you see? Let me look from both windows and let me respond with my both hands. Medar, as Medar, we are actively involved and supported the ongoing activities and incentives. Medar and Sudar collaboration is examining the present condition of our country and to design an active deposit return system. We do have a foreign expert, and the main outcomes of this study may be presented under some certain titles. So you can understand the proposed system, what type of a system we are speaking about. So you can just uh, make it lively in, in your mind. Of course, the industry should be in force in the uh, administrative executive process. 
I have this in uh, Mustafa Bey's speech and statement. Beverage inspector is directly being affected, so they should take an active role in decision taking mechanisms. So they do have a representative uh, structure within the framework of decision taking, so it should be a non profit execution model. As an outcome of this study, this is a general outcome. And of course, an effective, uh, in order to have an effective deposit return system, there are seven basic principles. And the major of them have been presented by Juliana. There are some first matching signs and there are some changing signs. It is essential to have a very strong control mechanisms with related legislation. And of course, during the decision taking process, we should be an execution model, including all of the related parties. Having a unilateral and a simultaneous implementation process, not by selecting some certain regions, at every region, it should be enacted simultaneously. There are labeling issues and uh, fulfilling them regionally is very hard for the producers to do, to achieve. And it should be a wide spectrum the system and uh, all of the collected materials and deposit fees should be kept by the system operator. It should finance itself as an income actually source and there shouldn't be any conflicts and contradictions between the materials. And Juliana also emphasized this point. We totally agree with that. And it should be transparent. It should be cost-effective, a financial system, and there should be a robust a financial controlling system. And that we mentioned about the consumer side. It should be consumer-oriented. It should be easy to adapt, and there it should be uh, some acknowledgement programs, it should be easy to understand, it should be easy to comprehend, and also uh, public service announcements and advertisements can be used. The system is very critical here. With, to make it sustainable, it is essential to create a model which is a non-profit. And it should finance itself, and it should be a non-profit organization. So there are two, uh, two of them are going together. And there should be an additional budget, it should be transparent, and uh, we should, of course, revise it with these ideas in mind. So in order to wrap up, the beverage industry should be involved in the decision-taking process. And the, uh, of course, legal structures should be designed and should be implemented. It should be a non-profit organizational structure, income, and also the expenditure balance should be kept. It should be a holistic system. It should include all of the re uh, regions, and uh, there shouldn't be any contradiction among the materials. It should be consumer-oriented. It should be easy to understand. It should be user-friendly, and the consumer should be acknowledged and trained about the system. In the following process, uh, this is something important to be taken into account. I would like to thank you. I have tried to generalize some certain points and uh, to emphasize some certain points. Thank you. I would like to thank you one by one. You have pointed out very striking you points. You expressed it really clearly. And you have shown and us you your shared with us the view of your industry. These are all very important points and almost all of them are suggestions that are tested and approved. They have proven successful. So in terms of uh, nonprofit, I have a different view. Well, you know that. I don't want to branch this topic, but when we consider the new law and the corporation, um, the corporate structure that we have, we want to have the Turkish Environment Agency as the agency that runs this operation, maybe they can come up with a platform. They tried it in the past, they might try uh, to reestablish it. So maybe they can move forward like that. They might come up with the management of the DRS with that platform. So the administrator is the Turkish Environmental Agency. That looks incredibly likely. But I do agree with your arguments, actually, because in terms of decision-making mechanisms, you need to be involved actively. 
and supervision is extremely important. It's very important that the system is launched simultaneously across the globe. It needs to be simple. And there are different sizes of beverage cans in other countries, and they have different deposit values for different sizes of uh, cans, and that's very confusing. It would have been possible if uh, we were a small country, but we have a population of 80 million, so it has to be quite simple. But most importantly, we need to have a sustainable finance system. And how to do that? Because we should not have a breakage of the chain at all. It's very complicated. The money flow is very, very complex. And so the put to market starts a journey when they give the product to the retailer and then it goes on the journey you have the consumer and then the money flows in that circular level so how to do that cash flow so how to do the material flow at the same time so there should be no interruption with the material flaw we should not allow fraud or any other road accidents so the material should end up in recycling facilities and we need to be able to trace all of that we need to have a very reliable very healthy information flow and i guess that's the whole question these three types of flows should be ensured and if we do that the problem will be solved mate up so let's hear from you as representative of association of packaged water producers so you also have soda right yes natural mineral waters are also part of us but they also have another association but yes natural mineral water producers are a part of us as well so actually you are releasing to the market a very very affordable price well water is the, is the same so it's as though you're selling the package not the product itself yes the um, package actually is all about the money so then do you have any worries about maybe your sales could do, go down with the deposit value added because could that be perceived as like a um, markup we never thought of it that way sorry it's not a markup on the product, the deposit value. It's just a debt in order to not uh, litter the environment. And that's a debt. And they just um, get it back. But how to solve this issue? In Germany, some water brands are actually, some water products are uh, cheaper than the deposit value. So if a, a bottle is one euro, then the deposit value is 1.5 euros. So how to solve this problem? And what are your suggestions in other topics? Actually, I'm not sure if I can come up with a solution, um, but I'll share with you my views. Thank you so much, Arda. Well, just like we have mentioned before, plastic is considered a, a significant a littering item, but in circular economy, it is also a significant resource. And if we want to make sure that it does not litter the environment, but turns into a raw material, then we have to go through a DRS. And this is something that we take seriously. Just like you have mentioned, the Turkish Environment Agency is the responsible authority that's now designated and they do come up with strategies and various projects about the environment. They are also resp responsible for legislation that will be introduced as part of such efforts. So actually, deposit return system bears multiple necessities. It is a complex structure and its success relies on a variety of factors. That's why this system should have a self-reliant management. So it could be an administration under the Environment Agency, but of course, as companies, producers that release products to the 
market, we are very much aware of our ERP and we are EPR and we are very, very aware of, of that. And we have knowledge, we have experiences and we feel that we need to have a say in the decisions that will be taken. That's why we need to have direct representation in the administration of DRS, both as producers of packaging, uh, packaged water and other beverages. Of course, retailers should be involved as well. But speaking on behalf of my industry, beverage and packaged water producers must definitely be heard in the administration of DRS, and they should be involved in the administration of the process. And aside from administration, the operation of DRS should self-finance and it should follow a non-profit operation. And that is critical for the sustainability of the system because we've done a lot of analyses and Esra mentioned, for example, uh, the consultancy example, and it's it's um, it's a compromise when you start considering profits. That's why you should not have a profit-based operation. We've seen in other countries they collect revenues, but then it's just a part of the administration. The revenues go into the administration and those revenues are put back into the running of the operation. So that's why we think it's important for the effectiveness of the system. Of course, we expect the financial flow, the accountancy records to be transparent and public authorities should be controlled. This is something that we cannot um, compromise. So the public authorities should be undertaking supervision and we have to start the system effectively and correctly at the start. So what do we mean by a correct start? So it has to be simultaneous across the country in all regions in the country. Otherwise, then if you have discrepancy between applying regions and non-applying regions, regions, then there would be um, cross sections in terms of um, packaging and it would really create a chaos and if we want to take the system and make it consumer oriented and it has to be that way if you come up with a very complicated system then it would not be easily understood by the consumers access would be very very complicated so it has to be started launched simultaneously across the country as a citizen i believe that it's significant that the whole system is consumer oriented because there might be so many different consumer groups that are not aware of the situation, but there are people uh, who might have a high level of awareness, but they might not understand what's going on. So before launch, we should have public information ads, we should have other types of information campaigns in order to make sure that information shared well enough. And we're actually voluntary in terms of sharing uh, our contributions. Sales points and retailers, they are also important block in the system because they are the keys to the meeting of the targets with collection units. That's why in retails and in horecas and other sales units, we have to really consider how they will be involved in the in the system. All their responsibilities should be designated from the get-go. Our perspective is as follows. All sales points should be a part of the system. Otherwise, we cannot meet the desired targets. And I've mentioned before, in terms of extended producer responsibility, we are aware of it and we support the system, but in terms of uh, companies, if they have to have problems in cash flow, those burdens should be eliminated. And we should not have extra employee necessities burdens. So how to do that? Well, the financial system of 
the financial system of the operation should be carried out effectively so that there wouldn't be extra burden of cost on the retailers. We have a different type of trade that is available across Turkey, and it's been like that for a very long time. So in terms of how the cost is flown, we have uh, cost flows, we have to make sure that the due uh, term is respected. Lastly, in order to effectively set up a DRS, we need to make sure that all perspectives are involved. We need to have the beverage industry, packaged water industry. We need to have sales points and retailers. All the other stakeholders should come together to do a working group activity. And with that, the Turkish Environment Agency, of course, they will be carrying out the regulations and legislation side of it, and they will work on the laying of the foundations. They have to work with them. And we are ready to provide any support that might be required. And this is all from me, but sorry, sorry, Ida. I, I just um, overlooked what you were mentioning. Yes, water is cheap, both mineral water and fizzy water. They're water, they're affordable products. And multinational companies have different applications in different countries. We followed them. And in some countries, just like you said, the deposit value might be above the price of the water product itself. But of course, uh, we're really closely following how that will unfold in Turkey. And we're trying to understand the perspective of the consumers because we might maybe uh, face sales loss if the price of a product goes up very quickly. Of course, we want to have a reasonable deposit value, but what do we mean by reasonable? The system should uh, run effectively with that cost because we might come up with such a deposit value that will attract the consumers. So it's very, very critical. We need to work with the ministry in order to come up with a reasonable deposit value. And I think we should move forward like that. But of course, we don't really have a determined figure in our minds. We have to discuss with other stakeholders to come up with a final decision. But these are the criteria that we um, share in every platform. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mehtap. It's been very enlightening what you've shared with us and you have informed us. Uh, all the suggestions are very precious. So self-financing system, that is very important. But based on the calculations that we have, we can say that just like the scrap uh, value cannot meet the financial requirements of the system. Mustafa talked about huge increases in scrap uh, value. Let me put it this way. When we were carrying out the TDRS um, project a couple of years ago, we knew that aluminum, a ton of aluminum was 7,000 TL, PET was 1,500, and glass was about, I think, 300. So it was actually very, very low uh, compared to what we have right now. So this financial feasibility needs to be updated, just like Mustafa said. But it's not only about scrap value. Costs have also gone up. Logistics increased. Um, logistics costs are very, very important, just like Julia talked about very rightly. Handling fee, that is very important. And so retailers should receive a reasonable handling fee. Of course, they should not be considering profiting on that, but it, they should have uh, a handling fee paid to them. So yes, we need to update the financial feasibility. There are, these are the two major costs and there are other minor costs and they should be compared with the revenues. And then we should find the gap between the costs and revenues. And if there is a gap, that's gonna be a negative value because the revenues will be lower than the costs. And I guess that's where extended producer responsibility steps in. 
maybe retailers will be a part of that because we're talking about a stakeholder that uh, have huge turnovers, who I just mentioned. Retail, a retailer has 200 billion TL turnover. So maybe that negative gap could be filled by them. But of course, we're talking about very reasonable levels and they should just reflect the real cost. And on that, of course, we need to be transparent. I, I agree with you about the importance of transparency. Um, so with all of these in mind, we need to revise the feasibility reports on finances. Otherwise, then, you know, we talked about how water is cheap uh, as a product. Otherwise, then water will be very expensive. Why? Because climate change is a huge trouble for all of us. And water producers, bottled water producers, will not be able to find water. Why? Because we have drought. Yes, underground water resources are depleting. And so a bottle of mineral water or a PET bottle of uh, water, 500 ml, maybe uh, today it's 1 TL, maybe then it's going to be 10 TL. In the US, during times of crises, again, due to climate change, you know, they have all these I, uh, hurricanes and storms. One PET one P -E -T, uh, bottle of 500 ml was sold at $500. Of course, it was very transitory, but if you had $500, $100, you would buy a one PET bottle of water of 500 ml. I hope we're not going to go that way. But just like I've said, we are also focused on, on correct and effective use of underground and above ground water. But we are very much supporting the uh, activities that prevent the littering of water resources because we're all impacted by that, both as citizens, both as producers, both the state. We are all impacted by um, the effects you're talking about. I agree absolutely with what you say. So water is cheap now, we are lucky, but water is elusive. It can just go away and turn into a very expensive uh, good. That's when uh, it might be more um, less affordable than the deposit value. So climate change, green agreement and circular economy, these are important, and the DRS is a very, very important part of the um, zero waste management and also circular economy. Yes, it needs to be financially sustainable, but it's not a trade business. It is an environmental protection activity. We're all trying to protect our environment, and we should look at it that way. Thank you so much. Now, with that glitch. I'd like to give the floor to Vedat Klitsch again. From the perspective of a recyclist, I'd like to hear from you optimistic comments about the future. We will achieve this. The people in the recycling sector will be the shining stars of the coming years. When I looked at the turnovers of recycling sector, um, well, the first one is 27 billion euros. The second one is 7 billion, uh, 8 billion, 6 billion euros, the top four. So, it looks like uh, the recycling sector could be the largest sector from a commercial point of view in Turkey. But I don't want to say that it's a very profitable sector. That's not what I'm uh, emphasizing on. No, how does the recycling sector make money, make profit? Well, through gigantic contribution to uh, the protection of the environment, rather than um, throwing away a glass bottle, can I recycle it? 
move to the automotive sector to many other sectors. As far as I know, it's 17 sectors that I can contribute to. So how can we develop a recycling sector? What is the role of the DRS in this? Could we hear from you? As you had time left uh, from the previous round, uh, I did kind of a short presentation. What are your suggestions to make the recycling sector a shining star? How are you going to position yourself in the recycling sector? What are your recommendations? Well, we have to. Well, well, we define it. This is not something about the system in general. It was a definition for the whole sector. So uh, the recycling um, figures of 60%, 80% in Europe is only 6%, 8%. It's worth appreciation. So I'd like to, first of all, mention this. What can we say about this? Well, what are we going to do for the recycling sector? Raw material obtained from recycling um, starting to use them in production uh, has changed everything. Um, you say important things, but your voice, voice quality is very low. Is it because of you or could the technical team check it? Is there a loss of connection? Okay. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. Now you can continue. Thank you very much for your warning. Well, we know that the environment agency is the boss in Turkey. When we look at the legislation, we see that it is appointed by the ministry. When we look at the examples worldwide, this structure has to be transparent. So the structure should involve uh, retailers. Could How could this be controlled? But transparency, is very important. And uh, transparency is very important in the monitoring process. Could the system finance itself? Well, many studies show uh, that, uh, that the waste does not finance, is not sufficient to finance the system, but all the revenues collected should be used to finance the system in a very transparent manner. There is something important here, and it draws my attention. There are certain examples given, certain by developing certain applications. Um, well, it looks much more uh, convenient to keep these in the system uh, by checking it through an application at the retailer. But here, the important thing is to collect it in a clean manner and make sure that it reaches the recycling facilities. So the packaging collected through recycling, it's very important. After this packaging is collected, 
how these will be transferred to the recycling facilities must be defined well. Otherwise, um, even if you have paid the fee for recycling, it could still end up at the landfill area. I would like to mention what Hülya uh, said, uh, that glass should be included in the recycling process. When we look at the environmental problems caused by glass, I believe that the DRS system should uh, be in place for glass. Well, summer is uh, about to come. We talk about wildfires in uh, forests. Uh, because of broken uh, glass, we will have wildfires. Well, we have 1.2 billion tons of uh, uh, glass, only 100,000 uh, tons are being collected. So, collection, sorry, the deposit system should start at the same time and in a coordinated manner. And as I tried to say at the beginning, citizens should become part of the system in order to contribute to the system. The deposit fee, the deposit fee is very important. If you collect that fee in a way, if you don't define that deposit fee in a way uh, that would enable citizens to take it back to the retailer, this means uh, that all processes, all retailers, after having set up all the system, if we cannot get uh, that packaging back to the market, then it's going to cause significant problems. Sustainability is very important to run the system. Well, to make sure that the system starts in uh, uh, in the best way possible, it doesn't matter whether we start one or two years later. All of the studies that we have conducted in Europe have shown this. Thank you very much. Thank you. A question came to my mind. We say 2022. Okay, let's spend 2022 with investments, but in 2023, once uh, citizens return uh, the beverage uh, packaging. Let's say uh, that the return rate in the first year is 70%, and then it will go up to 80%, 90%. Lithuania, within a very short period of time, in only three years, reach 95%. If we could achieve that, we do, do we have the capacity to recycle billions of packaging? I know that our current capacity it does not, uh, um, our, our capacity is much higher than the items collected. That's why we have to import. We have a huge potential. That's why we keep importing uh, packaging. We have huge potential. I'm going to ask the same question to Mustafa Urgen. Well, uh, waste glass uh, collected by uh, the facilities is only one tenth, one fifteenth of the current capacity. If you are not ready for this, even if you have the cash flow, material flow, even if they reach at your doorstep, if you say, well, I don't have the capacity for this, this means that I'm going to dispose it in the sea or uh, they will end up in landfills. What are we going to do? As of today, uh, it's 50 million tons processed on an annual basis with technological advancements. The recycling industry have invested heavily in this. 
in metal, in paper, in glass. Very significant investments uh, have been made. These are technological investments. From a technological point of view, the facilities we have in Turkey are much more advanced than the counterparts in Europe. When I look at figures, uh, 200,000 tons of PET and 50,000 tons of uh, aluminum cans and 1,300,000 uh, glass. So, uh, Turkish recycling industry can manage it, can meet that uh, capacity. If they are collected, they will be processed, they could be processed. But, if uh, the waste is collected through retailers, through uh, gas stations, if they do not end up in the recycling industry, but in the waste bins, then this is a great danger. The recycling industry could meet these, has the capacity to meet these. That's good to hear. I believe uh, everyone is very happy to have heard it. If we have to make any investments in this field, then the country should make preparations for this. But I believe that the investments could be further uh, developed. Well, there are recycling companies without a license, maybe they have to uh, stay out of the game so that we have a better uh, picture. So we shouldn't consider any recycling uh, uh, that is informal. There are licensing criteria defined by the Turkish um, Union of Stock Exchanges and chambers. When you look at the situation on the spot in the field, there are facilities with state-of-the-art technology, but there are also companies with uh, the changes made in the legislation in 2011, and the criteria were made in a way simpler. The documents, some of the documents were taken out of the uh, licensing uh, documents. So we have now a total of 3,000 uh, licenses, licenses held. There is ongoing work on this. The ministry is, in, is uh, carrying out that work. So we will see improvement in time in glass, plastic, and aluminum, we have uh, very significant investments made, which are state-of-the-art plants. Well, we have even facilities that could convert them into fibers uh, with the introduction of a mechanical uh, recycling, we are going to start uh, producing uh, RPT. The sector is waiting for the legislation to be uh, uh, enforced. Once these three groups enter uh, the DRS system, then the DRS system could also be introduced in other groups. It would be very influential. Unfortunately, in Turkey, we cannot sort at source uh, due to some structural problems. We have the uh, fact of scavengers. We have not been able to uh, design a bilateral collection system, as it is the case in Europe. So 
With respect to the management of waste, other than those materials that could be recycled, there should be a policy in place that should be implemented. From the perspective of the recycling sector, and uh, with respect to the use of these uh, materials in the main industry, these are these are very important. And the problems of the retailers are very important. Uh, it has to be, all those problems have to be solved in the DRS system. But unfortunately, while working on a DRS, it looks as if we have kind of disregarded the problems of the uh, of the recycling industry. That's why I wanted to ask you that uh, question. You are the end point because uh, after you, it goes to the packaging producer. If your problems are solved, then it is going to be very crucial for the success of the DRS system. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to give the floor to Mustafa um, to take his opinions in the second round. What should we do so that we can uh, implement methods uh, that are sustainable from a financial point of view and uh, that we can have a system in place that would make our children happy. It's as if, uh, handing over the magic wand. Well, unfortunately, I'm sad to say that I cannot give an answer to this question, but I have some modest recommendations. All of these are very uh, important. Uh, you mentioned uh, EPR. Uh, well, for the past 15 years, there has been uh, work done on EPR. Unfortunately, when you look at it, there is the cost of collecting waste. But unfortunately, after a certain point, the cost does not meet the cost of collecting it. It is as if it did not take into account physical collection as part of uh, the um, harmonization with the EU. A key, uh, the table, the picture uh, looks as if uh, the targets increase as 50, 52% to meet the targets of the EU. So, the countries which cannot meet the targets, which couldn't meet the targets, had to pay very high costs because uh, the states had to pay penalties. And then uh, governments reflected this on the producers. In Europe, in terms of EPR, uh, in Germany, it's 77 euro ton. Uh, in Finland, it's 112. Deposit is more costly. It's 124 euros Actually, in Estonia. 333. So we are speaking about 200 cent euros, 200 euros. So it is a costly job. And neither the um, supplier or the retailing points or any other stakeholders cost, uh, it is going to be the cost reflected on the consumer side and it is going to cause an increase on inflation rate. As the other speakers have mentioned, the costs that we have mentioned here should be calculated efficiently, appropriately, and also deposit. The participation fees somehow should be regulated. And we have always spoken and discussed this issue with you, how we need to open our tenders, how we should determine the actually values. We should be non-profit oriented, but we should keep our reserves, our presence on the other side. Our first proposal is uh, the agency. 
is going to deal with the environmental issues. I mean, the Turkish Environment Agency should deal separately with the logistics side and should deal separately with the product and produ production side. When we speak about the product price, it is changing. And when we look at the updated prices and with the income that will be uh, taken, that will be earned, it is going to create a fund for the uh, agency and Turkish agency. When we consider uh, the same product, the uh, should not be recorded, registered in the system. There should be some regulations related with the product groups, product items after the completion of a year uh, for the products which are not returning to the system can be recorded, can be registered as an income. After making the maintenance inside the regulation, this non-returned uh, product incomes with uh, the uh, earned values, earned prices of the sold uh, products, may be uh, applied, may be kept at the level of uh, creating a balance. Yes, we do have the deposit uh, participation fee, which is being taken from the producer side, which is uh, providing it for the market. But on the other side, the sales costs should be somehow provided and the system for the counting centers uh, sustainability and profitability should also be provided and tomorrow we're done applying the sustainable model uh, the deposit return fee should be on annual basis updated and uh, this will bring turkey to the further levels and we can create an example for europe this is something critical to be presented and operator and inspector should be separated from each other. Uh, the system operator should not be audited by itself. The auditive mechanisms, the inspection mechanisms on the legislative side should be determined and defined efficiently. And um, these are all, frankly to speak, if I miss something, I can respond if you have any further questions. You have just given me a magical stick and I have tried to do my best to express the situation. You have pointed out very striking uh, details. When we resolve the problems, the system will flow continuously and without having any problem. I'm sure that it will operate efficiently. Turkish Environment Agency and the administrative system will operate very efficiently. This is what I believe in. And there should be an efficient uh, inspection system. A fair approach is essential among the stakeholders. So there should be a fair play on the ground. And uh, the citizens should be a part. And uh, I'm sure that they will become a part very soon. We need to raise awareness. And awareness raising programs should be enacted. Financial issues are exactly the right. I mean, non-paid deposits or non-return deposits should have a contribution to the system. I mean, deposit participation fee may uh, proceed and become closer to backup model and uh, when we consider the actually uh, parties which are proposing it presenting to the market should have the uh, positive impacts rather than the inflative impacts it has got a cost it is the external cost when we consider marmara sea for example this problem this environmental problem this mucilage problem is all of ours problem in order to recover it and save this, secure and save it, we need to spend billion dollars all together to save it, to save Marmarcy. If we have taken the preventive measures before, we shouldn't, we wouldn't spend this high amount of money after you pollute something that's very hard to clean it. It is the same for the deposit system. In order to not pollute the environment, try to carry on an operation and has got a cost. And what do we earn on the other side? We earn a clean environment. So we are not wasting our money. We are not, uh, I mean, carrying on any operation which will uh, make our country cool. We are trying to modernize. We would like to bring welfare and we would like to create an awareness, environmental awareness. And 
in the circular economy, it is one of the major components and it is going to contribute to economy a lot. Thank you very much. If you like, we can pass to Q&A part. Maybe from our audience, we may have some questions. Let's check it. Ayn do we have any question or comments on your side? You don't see your screen. Yes, we have questions. We have a few questions. Let me share the questions with you. Manual collection, loyalty card, and uh, viewing received is something critical. All of the kiosks and also small grocery shops may have an integrated uh, thermal received device or a barcode reader type of thing. This is a command. Who is making this command? Arturul Bey. Arturul Bey is making this command. Is he a representative of any stakeholder or not? There is another question. Let me learn that. There is one more question. Hello, Juliana. The product label. When we place the deposit fee, and when it becomes a waste, actually, it should not be the fee. It should it be the fee which was being sticked on it when it was being produced? So. It, is it going to be the fee which uh, it was being produced, I mean, related with the time it was being produced or a uh, time which it was being transformed into a waste? We can address this question to Juliana. You can read the, the Juliana's questions. If we are going to place, if you're not going to place a meter square base type of vending machines, how we are going to install and in place the vending machines according to what? Plastic, glass, and cans. What do the stakeholders are looking for from the vending machines? Do you want them to be separated or do you want to have them with two combinations? Two at once or one at once? Do you want them to be collected collectively or separate? Well, on the label, if the deposit fee is, for example, let me give you an example from plastic bag. A commission determined a certain amount of money in the beginning of the year. If they uh, determine 25 pence, we cannot change it. The deposit values is being determined by Turkish Environment Agency. And if they determine the Turkish, uh, the fees, we will apply that. So there won't be any changes, any diversity, what is being mentioned on the label. It has changed. Of course, we will give the return according to the time fee. I mean, whatever being declared on the label will be, the same on the cash register desk. So we will also declare that on the shelf labels. So what we present in our receipts are separate. When we, for example, apply it for the beer products, for example, there are some certain products like beer. When our consumers buy that product deposit value deposit fee can be separately seen in their receipt so we can provide transparency like that when we respond that meter square question what i wanted to say is the meter square size of the shop is not bringing any mandatory condition for vending machine ivm machine in general to say uh, about the one meter square of the shops uh, it is obligatory to Integrate RVM machines is something wrong to be mentioned in our country, especially small scaled shopping style is more frequently seen. So our sector is focusing on small scale shops. And when we speak about about one meter, 1000 meters square, there will be only a few shops in the sites. When we look at this, in this Saturn, cities related with the beverage sales it can be a very small scale shop in meter square but 
we can integrate, uh, uh, for example, machine there, but and can be used very frequently. But in the, for example, Eastern countries, there may be bigger sized shops, and we can integrate RBM machines, but they will not have any returns. So what we advocate is the efficiently, efficiency, and efficiently, it needs to be efficiently used. If we are placing a machine, it should separate the material. Um, I mean, there are some machines which are squeezing the product or the glass is being broken. It is not uh, being possible to count the product item by item. So they should be have three different storage units in the background. What is essential here is uh, the standards of these RBM machines and the ongoing uh, Turkish uh, ongoing studies of Turkish environment agency will determine the standards. All of the information which will pass to the agency, which will be transferred to agency's database, will give us some outcomes financially, will bring some data outcomes on different levels. And we will come across with our customers a lot. We have experienced this in shopping bags. Maybe some bottles will be broken or a label will be um, maybe erased and we will not be able to accept any waste or the vending machine will not take it. So in such kind of situations, those machines, the standards should be determined very efficiently in detail and also the deposit system products should be recognized efficiently all of these data safe and securely transformed to the agency or agency related database institutions and the sales data are very important and it is essential to bring confidentiality and all of these data security is very important for example if we have different type of actually data we should not have any fraud activities. What the machines need to be selected um, to serve our needs technologically. If we are going to place some certain machines according to the standards of our shops, um, of course, it should be inappropriate with the present conditions. There is one more question, if Juliana finished her answers, most of the from the production side, we do have a question. You have mentioned that there will be a deposit a return fee. So what do you mean by collection of this deposit return fees? What are you going to collect? I think Sarpian is asking this question. Of course, deposit return participation fee, it is going to be transformed into the GECAP pricing system. And it is openly being explained in the legislation. I would like to comment on Hunyanam's explanations. Exactly. There shouldn't be any mandatory condition about the machines. I mean, the RVM producers may have leasing methodologies as the operational cost at the selling points. If we do have one unit, if the leasing is costing two units, if the sales points will be using manual systems, if they take one unit in cost, operational cost, then uh, the vending machine installed uh, centers may give three units. It is so much related with the investment model. They may apply the model, which is suitable according to their scale uh, in order to create a win-win situation. The sales points uh, should have this perception and they need to, of course, relieve the machinery systems should relieve the system and they should address the cost of uh, sales, uh, somehow the sales points needs to keep the pace uh, to become sustainable. And when we have any losses at the selling point, that volunteerism will get lost. The European examples we did not come across in such kind of situations, but we would like to have fully inclusive system 
And if you want everyone to handle the barrister system, it should be inclusive from the very beginning. Well, to the other man you have mentioned, it shouldn't be mandatory. And this uh, RVM machines uh, should be on voluntary basis. Their logistic costs uh, are also being raised uh, one out of 4%. So any type of institution, any type of entity needs to afford those costs. And when we collect everything manually, then if we do have very low amount of RVMs, the costs will increase. And uh, of course, it is going to increase the uh, deposit participation fee. If we increase the number of REMs, the logistic costs will be lower and the participation fees will become less. Otherwise, the system cost will increase. And in order to calculate this, the previous feasibility study has presented a certain figure. I agree with you. Let's not place this, but when we do not place it, look at it from the operator's side. The operator will say that which market, which retailing shop um, is going to place this? I don't know. Let me count it as if no one will be placing it. And let me give my uh, proposal according to that. And the costs will be um, extraordinary. It will be abnormal. So if you are going to approach this issue from each of our perspective, uh, it will be, everything will be more crystal clear. We need to multiply such kind of meetings and we need to find the most efficient solution. Well, the retailing side is right, but also we do have such kind of a problem. But if you are smart enough, we can resolve it. I would like to add something what you have said. As you have mentioned, the machine, the REMs really makes our job easier. But when we look at the structure of our country, we do have very small formats. And we do have small scaled uh, business enterprises. I don't know, two years ago, we have organized a header meeting. All of the brands were uh, being placed in this on the same street with small shops. And we do not see such kind of structure in any European countries. They do have big scaled shopping structures. So there is an organized retailing the, uh, approach there. Of course, RVMs should be in place. But if you keep it as something mandatory, you may lead towards very wrong sites. With these collection centers, you need to figure out how you're going to manage and place those RVMs. And according to the surveys, people do not want to bring and return back their um, deposit. Maybe they're going to buy it from small shops and they will return it to those shops. I mean, the nearby, for example, supermarket, they will be bringing it back, returning it back. And one day, that call, if we have got one day delay in collection system, we won't have any storage in place in the background of our market. So this collection business is something very critical. But I mentioned it. Yes, there are some developments on the sectoral side, but I would like to mention one more thing. All around Turkey, we don't have such kind of a developed system. When we go to the eastern cities, 81 cities, we have shops. And this structure is becoming less. The system becomes slower. You are not able to find any licensed companies. Yes, in the Western region, in the Marmara region, in the Aegean region. In certain parts of Turkey, you have very nice facilities. But when you go further deep, logistics fees will go up and you will not be able to find facilities. That's why the collection systems are critical and we need to work on this. The Environment Agency hopefully uh, will take care of it um, and hopefully we're, we're going to engage in our cooperation and then discuss all of these methods and find the right path. This is what I'd like to say because this is the most sensitive part of the whole question. Well, in terms of uh, finding the correct path, I have no doubt. But of course, with different perspectives, we have different results. Um, so that's just something that I want to emphasize. So RVMs reduce costs, that's clear. 
RVMs, but they have uh, costs on their own and that increases. But if we do the feasibility right, and over the years, the system costs could go down and we'll have machinery technologies improving in Turkey as well, and then that's going to fix the problem. But unless we have no uh, RVMs, unless we have RVMs, then the transportation costs will go up. And some retailers also are talking about wanting RVMs. Some com companies said, well, actually, we're a small scale, uh, but we want RVMs because they attract customers, they says they say. So for example, they're about like 15, 20, 30 percent customer increase in small stores that have RVMs because that is quite attractive. Yes, it does hold up space, but it reduces logistics cost and actually it can boost your customer numbers. So we should just discuss all of that and then we have to find the right path. We have a single bullet, we have a single shot, we have to do it all together. Because after we set this up, we just saw the pictures, right? Then someone could have a whole sack of empty packages. And if they come to the RVM and then they can't get their money back, that's going to be the end of the DRS and it'll be just the killing shot. So it has to be really set up very well. We have to consider all the details in a very wide scope. And I believe that we're going to do it. And the ministry agrees with that. I do see that their approach is similar. And I think this is a glad development and they don't want to fail, of course. They want to succeed. And they're aware of the fact that this is a single shot. So hopefully, we are going to achieve that, and I'm sure of it. There's another question, if that's all right. Is it a difficult one? A very difficult one. May I just add something? Yes. In terms of deposit participation fee, maybe there might be a misunderstanding. I just want to clear that up. So our suggestion is as follows. A self-financing system is something like that, in our opinion. So I'm not talking about uh, a world in which the put to market agents are not uh, paying the deposit fees. Scrap value is one revenue stream and then unredeemed deposit, that's another one. And also the deposit participation fee, those are the revenue streams and we accept that. And in terms of waste management, of course, we do pay certain fees. What we are trying to point out is this, there might be extra costs due to the ineffective running of the system. That could create extra financial burden. So that's what we're trying to say here. Yes, the producers and put to market representatives will have to pay a price, but all these fees should serve into an effective system and effective meeting of the targets. I. I felt that there was a bit of a misunderstanding. I just wanted to clear that up. Thank you. Yes, if there was such a misunderstanding, I hope uh, we've cleared it up, but I hope I have not caused any misunderstanding. But yes, when costs go up, deposit participation fee will have to go up. That's why RVMs, if they reduce cost, then deposit participation fee will go down. So we can collect, uh, 100% manually, but then we would have fuel costs going up. And if that goes up, then the participation will go up. If you want to increase costs and reduce deposit participation fee, it no longer is a sustainable system. That's what I want to uh, emphasize. It is all linked together. So the more we have costs, the more we have to have revenues. There's another question then. Yes, there's a last question. This is the last one. So waste is connect, collected through DRS. And what about the recycling of all of that? Will recycling companies be able to receive all of that? What kind of a system will be followed? There is no name for that. Maybe we can 
uh, move on to the recyclers in the group. Can you hear me now? Yes, Vedat, the floor is yours. Finally, all these collected products will be evaluated by the recycling industry. There is no other way. Just like I, you have mentioned, um, Hidya shared a concern in metropolitan cities. There are big licensed uh, recycling facilities, but in rural areas, you don't find those fat facilities. But when we launch this system in Turkey, on a regional basis, there will be certain tenders. And based on those tenders, in regions where manual collection is uh, widespread, there will be counting centers. And when that is achieved, your concern of no uh, licensed facilities will be eliminated because you will collect the packages and periodically there will be uh, systems that will get those from you, the retailers. One thing to actually emphasize here, uh, and that was marked in one of the questions. When we look at the RVMs that are currently available out there, they have a single uh, deposit unit and then they sort after receiving because of course glass is fragile and it makes things difficult in recycling but in terms of PET and uh, aluminum if they are collected together and compressed then they can be sorted in recycling facilities that is possible that's why counting centers most of them are actually uh, going to be maybe um, set up by the facilities that we have out there. We know that a lot of industry players are following these processes and maybe some facilities will go in and invest in those counting centers that will potentially be out there. So we're going to see all of that in the upcoming period. There is a very small question. Is there any country that has achieved a successful DRS system without RVMs? Arturo is the poser of the question, and this is for Hulia. Well, actually, we'll have to test that together because in Germany, the rate is 80% to 20%, and Norway is it's up to 90% RVM collection. And they have, well, I have a data to share with you. Hold on a second. One RVM per 350 people. And in Germany, it's one RVM per 822 people. But in Turkey, here's a picture. Sales points do not have the size comparable to these countries. It's, it's not feasible. If we would have to have billions of dollars and euros uh, for, for all of that to be set up, most probably, we will have manual systems and we'll have grocery stores with lo less than 50 square meters. You cannot really set up an RVM in those places. What I'm trying to say is here, we have to test it all together and we'll decide, well, I can't really say uh, how much of it will be manual, how much of it will be through RVMs, but predominantly, I believe manual collection rates are going to be higher. Einar, I'd like to add one thing. Hulia is concerned about the obligation. If you put it as an obligation, it could hamper the function of the system. Yes, of course, just like Ardam said, Professor Ardam, this is an incentive. This is going to be encouraged. And maybe in Turkey that could be followed. Maybe several alternatives could be set up, financial models could be offered, because if it's going to reduce costs at the get-go, then 
there should be supporting mechanisms. Maybe, for example, we could have European funds stepping in and we need to maybe do that in order to increase the machine's functionality. And think of it this way, we're going to start in one year and it's not going to be very possible to apply all of that all across Turkey at one go. There will be a transition period. There should be encouragement, but if it starts as an obligation in the first year, that could dysfunction the system. We're talking about 2022. You mentioned that too. I guess 2022 is going to be about infrastructure and setup year. That's uh, the trend that we're seeing. So although it looks like a serious period is coming up, we need to have written uh, documents about what's going on. Maybe projects should be also carried out. Just like uh, other participants said, maybe we have to just sit down, uh, all of us, and put things on, on paper. If we have authorities listening to us, uh, maybe they can hear us. Let's not lose another year. We have recovery participation phase, yes, but we can't really monitor collection rates of uh, recovered materials. So maybe we need to start monitoring a special glass um, recovered. May I add one thing, if possible? We have very little time left, but manual or RVM or voluntary, actually, it doesn't matter because the economic requirements will be quite challenging for chain supermarkets because they will use that maybe as an instrument to attract customers. But actually, we are not going to uh, just go with the flow. We have to define everything very, very well at the beginning. Otherwise, there will be huge financial problems between the system operator and also the company that gets the tender. So this is incredibly important. What supermarkets will have REMs, what supermarkets will have uh, other solutions, all of that should be defined very, very well. This is another perspective. May I take the floor if possible? very briefly. Of course, we have producers here. Well, um, I'm representing the Beverage Association of Turkey. We have also Sudar Association of Packaged Water Producers. Actually, putting all, on, all the burden on the producers could not be fair either, because we should all bear responsibility equitably. I believe that that would be beneficial. We're all here um, and thank you for the opportunity. You've put it really rightly. We have to bear the responsibility altogether fairly. We should not just consider our own interests because we have no other choice. We are talking about a combined effort here. So if you keep the handling fee for retailers very low, then the producers will pay less participation fees, but that would be unfair to the retailers. And if we do the reverse and introduce a very high handling fee, then that would be unfair to the producers. So we need to optimize uh, so that no no one is, is treated on here uh, treated unfairly. And I believe that every one of us has good intentions and we need to also move on with agreements. Before we conclude, I would like to add one thing. I don't want to cause any misunderstanding. We are not against RVMs. Yes, it will create benefit for us in terms of staffing and controlling the system. And maybe uh, we might have to have a couple of RVMs in large stores. But just like I've said, in terms of 
financing, if there is no financial support, then that could create huge burdens for some companies. When we look at the structure of the retail in Turkey, if you just base everything on a calculation of square meters, then the company will incur costs that will, they will not be able to bear. So our demand is to have financial support. And when we have that, of course, we would like to introduce RVMs, but what we're trying to say is that, okay, RVMs will be only based on square meters of shops. Um, those above this will have to have, those below will not. We are not against that. We're not talking at all about collection centers. Collection centers should be discussed as well. And we should set up a mechanism in which that is possible. Of course, RVMs are a practical solution for all of us. Otherwise, then we would have to scan every product and it will ac accumulate. It's a huge amount of labor, just like Esra says. Yes, we have to bear responsibility equitably. And as retailers, you are at the heart of the operation. For example, uh, take plastic bags. We had a huge challenge. We're talking about inflation. We're talking about deposit values. We have to express ourselves very well in to the customer, but I know that we're going to be challenged by that. Yes, for the environment, we're going to bear responsibility, all of us, but this should be fair. And for that, we need to cooperate and we need to set up the right system. And we're ready to work so that that is possible. Thank you. That's That's been great, actually, to have that explanation. Very striking and very sol solution-oriented. Um, that has been the case with all speakers. Every speaker suggested very precious ideas and recommendations. I'm sure that it's been very beneficial for the participants and for me as well. I also had the chance to express my views uh, in between the others. So we've had uh, six people in two hours, but of course it's far larger than that. It's far more complex, but it's also very exciting. Maybe I can see from my voice. I have been on top of my excitement for the last two hours and I listened to you all. And hopefully, well, we're heading to the end of today. Thank you so much personally. Um, thank you for making the time and sharing your valuable views and for your faith in the system. I believe that when we keep this faith and determination, we'll set up DRS, and will also address all the other necessities required by our environment. Now I'd like to pass the floor for the concluding remarks to uh, Aynur, Aynur Ajaj, who is the head of Tucham and who is also organizing this very valuable event. Maybe you might want to conclude uh, with your remarks. Adiye Hanım from the ministry, and she also shared with us very positive messages. So we follow the positive steps taken by the ministry. And I always at least I personally always say that I follow their positive steps. The floor is yours, I know. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to thank each and every uh, panelist for having shared their views. I have taken a few notes and then I will close the session. I was quite concerned. Why? In the practices in Europe, those who uh, launched the system in Europe um, had a great sense of ownership. The brands that own the system did not own it at all in Turkey. They tried to find ways out. But today I saw that people are determined um, to 
own this system and produce positive results. So I'm very happy. And since the very beginning, Hulia uh, has been concerned about it. And I'd like to say the following. The minister should take it into account in the following manner. Once the practice starts in the first three months or six months, they will bring anything that they find on the streets. And in order to collect those, with respect to the collection of those materials, we will need your support as retailers, maybe manual collection, not maybe through machines, but manual collection will be needed. With respect to glass, and there's fab, because it went down from 6% to 3%. So it's quite a, a matter of concern for me, seeing and hearing that the percentage has gone down in glass. I believe that glass should be uh, given priority in collection. In terms of raw material, it has a high value. In terms of emission, in terms of uh, recycled materials, I believe that such materials will contribute significantly to the facilities in Turkey. We, as a Tucham women, the name uh, of our association is, uh, as you know, waste management and environment management. We will do our best to prepare whatever is needed, flyers, brochures, so we are ready to give full support. And my final sentence is, the deposit value for beverage packaging should be kept high, not low. In terms of recycling amounts, it's going to contribute to it. If the deposit fee is high, it will contribute to it. Please do not see the deposit fee as an increase in price or tax or as a penalty. I keep saying it again and again recently. Well, this fee actually is a saving of citizens. When citizens um, take them to collection centers, they will take their money back and continue shopping at market. So this is not a penalty, but an award. It's a saving for them. I like uh, thank everyone who has been with us uh, since morning. Now we have 66 participants. Uh, we had high participants uh, in the morning and at noon. I'd like to thank all foreign speakers and local speakers. Thank you very much for your contribution to the deposit summit. Thank you very much. I hope the next deposit summit will host um, much nicer breakthroughs. Maybe in 2022, uh, we can have another summit with surprise news, with good piece of news. Enjoy your evening.